Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. In the Caribbees is a city of grace With pretty women all wrapped in black lace You come to Havana for ecstasy Sit in the sun, caress a memory And close to the harbor stands a small hotel Three fifty a day includes no wishing well Sandals for the feet, mosquito netting for face Oh, come all ye tourists to Shannon's place <laughs> That was magnifico, King, real great Now I know what I've been missing That's right, Paulo Last time you were in the hotel, you didn't get to hear King Moses sing He was sitting on your chest <laughs> And he broke his guitar over my silly head only to impress upon you, young Paulo, that a life of crime leads only to a big hollow tone ringing in an empty noggin. <laughs> what time do you conduct services, King? We'll all want to put on our Sunday clothes. Oh, I only meant, Mr. Slade, to... I know, King. You meant we're all real happy young Paulo is doing so well. We really are, kid. It's good to see you like this. You do not hold anger against me that I once tried to dance a caper in your place to rub it up house and home? Forget it, Paulo. How's the job? The job you convinced Zapapo, the jeweler, to bestow upon me? Oh, it is fine. It is a knockout. I'm a bonded jewel messenger. Policemen meet me on the street and shake my hand. Your mother must be very proud, Paulo. You know, we ought to get down to the barrio to see her, Slate. We haven't even... I'm in trouble, Senor Slate. Big trouble. It makes a hurt in my head and in my heart. I do not understand what is... Hey, what's wrong, kid? What's... Hi, slaves. Remember me? Kirk. The punk you can't stand. We remember you. Slate threw you out of the place once before. You come back for a farewell performance? I come back for you to meet a Kirk that you'll adore. All plushy with dough and dough. Insurance investigator for Ronaldo Insurance Incorporated. Uh, share me with your friend, Slate. Who's the kid? Uh, adios, senor Slate. Adios. Hey, Paulo, come back here. What got into the kid? He ran out of here like... Like a scared rat? <laughs> They're all alike, Slate, these Havana gutter rats. Isn't that the one who tried to rob you once? And you've been holding hands with him? How do we say goodbye, Kirk? Feet first or just my hungry fist in your teeth? Oh, not goodbye, Slate. Just au revoir, because you've got a lot I want to forgive you for. Ah, it's a good place to consider it, Senor Kirk. Consider now this wide curve of beach. You're trying to say what? Oh, yeah, mi amigo. Listen to me. On a page, a philosopher once wrote down a thing. He wrote this. It's eating you, huh? You're getting chicken about what's going to happen? For you and me, amigo, he wrote that eternity was the length of time a bird would take to lift one grain of sand and fly away with it and return in a million years for another grain. When all the beaches in the world were bare of sand, this is eternity. Well, the kid was a thinker. I nod and agree. What's with you, Sapapo? The philosophy concerns how to steal your own jewelry and collect insurance. Is that true? Look how beautiful. Your jewelry shop, your jewels. Paulo steals jewels, Paulo dies. You get jewelry, insurance money. You like it? Es firmamento. Heaven. You don't know how right you are. We've even got an angel named Shannon. Angel stupid type. 
Now watch it, Sapapo. The tide's coming in. You'll get your feet wet. <laughs> Pull out a chair, Slate, and fan me into it. I can't move my jeans another inch. Sure. There's the chair. Work it out for yourself. Oh, Slate, Slate, the life you lead a girl. An innocent girl with only two pair of nylons to her name. I keep telling you to wear sweat socks, Ellie. You could start a fad. Jeans over sweat socks. You could begin a new life yourself, Rover boy. Stop sticking your nose down alleys, up crannies. Kid said he was in trouble, didn't he? And he runs out before he can tell us what trouble. So we go looking for him because it itches me a kid we like should be in trouble. In the slums, in the barrio, on the beaches, in the pool halls. When you fly a mission, you really fly, don't you, kid? No, Paulo. Where is he, sailor? What's he running from? What do any of us run from? Maybe he got tired, like I get tired. Maybe he found a downy cushion someplace and he's sitting on it. All alone, away from the... Keep talking, sailor. Maybe you can gather a crowd. Clay Shannon speaking. You are occupied, senor. Unoccupy yourself. Come to Sopapo the jeweler immediately. It is an order. I already got a watch band, kid. Besides, your salesmanship smells. I wouldn't... For the boy, Polo, you would. You wouldn't? I would. Get your other pair of nylons out of your hope chest, sailor. We're going walking again. I ask Senor Kirk to be with us here in my office, uh, Senor Shannon, uh, Senorita, because his interests lie in the same direction as ours. Slate, either ask him what his direction is or tell him to stop staring at me. Leave him alone. The guy's got shifty eyes. Let him shift. What's this all about, Sir Papo? Uh, Senor Kirk, explain. Sir Papo here did a dumb thing, Shannon. Thought you'd want to weep about it. It's sailor's feeding time, gentlemen. Let's get on with it, huh? Now, Sir Papo hired a kid named Paulo because you asked him to. <laughs> dumb him, hiring the boy who tried to knock over your place. Hiring a kid like that is a jewel, messenger. He's very dumb, me. Senor Shannon, my apologies, but I hate you for making me listen to you. He don't want to come right out and say Paulo absconded with a whole consignment of jewelry. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Believe or not to believe, that is not the question. Paulo failed to deliver a consignment of jewels. He failed to let me know the reason why. He has been gone since this morning. Disappeared. Paulo likes you, Slate, which already makes him a kid with a warped sense of values. Maybe you worked out a little deal. I'm just asking because, as any fool can plainly see, I've got an evil mind. Kirk. A deal, huh? It goes like this. Then this idea occurs to me. <laughs> Only this is a better one. <sighs> you like the deal, Kirk? All that exercise makes me hungry, Slate. Uh, me too. Come on, sailor. Let's go scare up a tortilla. <laughs> Why are you coming to the tortillas, sailor? They scare me. Read me the recipe again. Oh, what's with you? A simple dish like tortillas with beans. You scream out the window at the neighbors. How do you make a tortilla? You stop the postman, ask him how his wife makes them. You make me buy a shelf of cookbooks. The whole town's talking about what a lousy cook you. Just tell me how you want it. Spread over the face would be nice. You want it like that? Oh, give it up, sailor. You weren't cut out for it. Peel me a banana. Read me the recipe. Not good with bananas either, huh? Give it to me. Paulo's in real trouble this time, isn't he, Slate? I still don't believe it. Maybe the kid was knocked off. Maybe... Uh-uh. No, Shannon. Not knocked off. I just heard from him. He sounded real alive. Made sounds and everything. The creep really creeps around, doesn't he, Slate? If he hadn't opened his mouth, the girl wouldn't know someone was peeping at her tortillas. I just couldn't bring myself to louse up such a dripping domestic scene. You come to apologize for the beating I gave you, Kirk? That, too. Paolo whispered through a phone to meet him in a tenement in the barrio in three hours. You can't have joined the party, Shannon. Couldn't live without it. How are you with tortillas, Kirk? Hand me the frying pan, honey. I'll cook you a thing you'll never forget. Hey, 
Hey, Shannon. Over here. Where's Paulo? In that tenement house. How do you get information like this, Kirk? Oh, be sensible, Shannon. A kid steals $100,000 worth of jewelry. It's hot. He can't get rid of it, so he makes a deal with me. On account of I represent the insurance company. Deal? Fifteen grand. That's why he got in touch with you and not with me. That's why, huh? Sure. Said he'd meet me here. But I wanted you to see for yourself what the kid was, so I'm bringing you along to watch how a thief works with an insurance operative. You wouldn't want it any other way. Let's go in the tenement. Hey, put that gun back in your pocket, Kirk, or... Or you'll break my arm? That's right. Whatever you say, Shannon. Come on. Yeah, dark, huh? Lucky I brought a flash. Paulo! Hey, Paulo! Let me handle it. Paulo! Paulo, it's Slate Shannon! Hey, maybe he's not here. Uh, he's here. That sound came from the basement. Hey, somebody's shooting at somebody down there. Yeah, and somebody's taking the powder. Well, let's get him. Here. Here, take it. My gun. Maybe if I used it, it'll upset you. Go on, take it. Yeah. It could need using. Hey. Shine your light over there. Where? Back of the staircase. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take a look, Shannon. Paulo. Shot. He's dead, Shannon. Your boy's dead. But I don't understand it. Why? What happened? He was doing okay. Just this morning he told me... Let me tell you. Paulo was a bad boy. A bad boy in bad company, and the company just took a part it. How do you like Paulo now, Shannon? Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. And for a handful of colored stones, a boy lies dead here. Don't get sentimental about it, Inspector. I heard once a kid knocked off his dear old dad for the price of a ticket to a burlesque show. Now oh, the kids nowadays. And what do you think, Shannon? Well, it looks like what Kirk says. Paulo stole the stuff, had a partner. They met here before Kirk and I got here. Argued. Partner shot Paulo. That's what I said, LaSalle, only I never got to the good part. For such tidbits, I hang out my tongue. Good part? How come Shannon here planted the kid in Sapopo's establishment? Why, I suppose... I'll answer him, LaSalle. Okay, Kirk, ask that again. Sure. How come you planted Paulo and... Get the answer, Kirk? No! <laughs> Gee, I, I guess I lost my head, LaSalle. You have committed something here. I will think what. And while I am thinking, you are becoming a fugitive from justice by the second. In that case, I'd better just run away. Keep it legal so I can be a fugitive. Taylor! Taylor, where are you? In your office, Slate. If you want me, come and get me. I finally found your little black book, Slate. I browsed through it, read the last chapter of telephone numbers, knew the whole plot, and tore it up. Taylor, that took me years of self-sacrifice, burning the midnight oil. Here are the pieces. On the lonely nights, you can amuse yourself by trying to put them all together again. You know, like a jigsaw puzzle. It's the latest thing for tired bachelors, I hear. Oh, don't worry. I'll put them back together again if it takes years and years. Paulo was just murdered in the Barrio tenement. The gendarmes think I had a finger in it. What makes them think a thing like that? You've got a publicity agent, Slate? Yeah. The creep, name of Kirk. You coming, sailor? I'll need your help. Maybe enough of it to keep me alive. Well, 
One more flight, sailor, a short one. I've seen tenements before, Slate, but this one... Yeah. Down the hall. <laughs> sí. Ay, señor Shannon. Señorita Duval, por favor, come in. You will forgive the appearance of my There's heart. nothing to forgive, Senora Ruiz. We came to tell you... Well, it's about... You tell her, sailor. Uh, Senor Ruiz, about Paulo. Of my son. Of his dying. Of this I already know. And the tears of me are for my solitude. Uh, it's difficult to weep when others watch. Even such others as you. We want you to know we're sorry. Anything we can do. There is only weeping to be done. Slate. Yeah. Yeah, I see it, too. Senora Ruiz, the last time I was here, you weren't wearing that ring. Ay, es un zumpone, a puzzle. This morning in the mail it came. Just like that, huh? And more, senor. A little after the mail, a man came, a man called Manuel. He of the pawn store, saying he heard of my good fortune and wished to You gonna talk to me, Manuel? Senor, I do not... Talk! How did you know Senor Ruiz got that ring? Let me hit him a few times, Now, Slate. keep out of this. What about it, Manuel? Why should a lousy fence like you suddenly know all about Senora Ruiz? Uh, see, si, see, si, I will tell you. It is of a robbery. It is whispered about here in the barrio that some of the jewelry befell the Senora because her son, Paolo, had to do with the robbery. Also, the... the, the... There is what? This... A ring, the beloved of Paolo, a girl, Rita, who lives nearby. She came into my place and sold me a ring. Where would she get such a ring if not from Paolo? Paolo is a thief. Did I do good, sailor? I believe the word is magnifico. That's it. You did magnifico. <laughs> What do you want of me? You have a wrong place. I don't think so, Rita. Mind if we come in? What? How you know my name? I know nothing of you. How you know so much of me? Don't be frightened, Rita. I'm Sailor Duval, and this is Slate Shannon. Oh. We've come to... Slate Shannon? Oh, Paula has told me muy simpatico things of you, many nice things. Please, come in. Rita, you pawned a ring. Where did you get it? Did Paulo give it to you? Where would Paulo get such a precious, such an expensive thing? It came in the mail. Well, maybe you should have given it to the police, Rita. Manuel, the palm broker, he gave me 600 pesos for it. With 600 pesos, Paulo and me could have been married. Could have been man and wife. Rita, we love Paulo, too. We... I take the money, senor. You keep it. Give it to the police, to a beggar. I have no use for it. The money for the flowers for Paolo's grave, I will earn. If you need us for anything, Rita, just... Let's go, Slate. It is very interesting what you tell me, senor, senorita. It tweaks me in a place that should be tweaked. You hear that, Slate? I tell you, this LaSalle is a policeman with a very zippy brain. Well, don't say it too loud, sailor. The whole thing might vanish right before our eyes. Mm, it is not an illusion, senor. This is one of my good days. I zip because what you have told me could very possibly be true. This of the mailing of the stolen jewels of the... Then you believe Paulo was innocent. That he had nothing to do with the robbery. That he was murdered in cold blood because he knew something and tried to tell me. Whoa, back off, senor Slate. You are straining your leash. I didn't have a hand on him. Perhaps you brought jump to too many conclusions, senor, senorita. 
to the matters you have told me, I will give a pinch of credence. But of Barlow's innocence, of this I am not quite so... Uh, uh, I am not quite. Ah, you're getting unzipped again, kid. Paulo was innocent. How much more do you need to get it through the ball skull? Please, senor. I want you to observe something. Some photographs that were taken at the scene of Paulo's death. We don't care to look at them, LaSalle. It's not one of our fonder memories. Oh, perhaps you will grow fond of this one. Look at it, senor. This is a police laboratory photograph of the gun that was found in the dead Paulo's hand. It has been sprinkled with fingerprint powder. Cans of... Uh, curious, is it not? Never have I seen such... Yeah. Yeah, never have I either. Come on, sailor. I want to show you what makes a gun found in a boy's hand so curious. <laughs> The first thing I remarked to myself when you walked into my office, uh, senor, senorita, is why you two are not chained to the police. We want to have a look at your vault, Sir Papo. Since I was a little girl, I wanted to look into a jeweler's vault. Mother said, wait till you get older. And now I'm older. Do you come to buy jewelry wholesale? Not today. Right now, I just want to find some stolen jewelry, stolen from you. Let's look in the vault. You are insane. Not today, either. His time is Tuesday afternoon. You want me to open it with the top of your head, Sir Papo? Uh, excuse me. I wish to make a phone call. The phone calls come later. Open it. For this, senor, this insult? If this is what's needed to get it open... Have a fun, Shannon. Kirk! Kirk, help me! In my desk, a gun! Well, Kirk. Kirk, the eminent insurance investigator. You're a straight shooter, Kirk. Sir Papo asked me to help him, I did. I got him out of his troubles. That's help. I once knew a guy who was helped and he wasn't killed at all. What kind of an ungrateful guy are you, Shannon? The jeweler was going to knock you off. Look at him. Look at his hand. He was getting ready to pull a luger. Sure he was. What'd you knock the gun out of my hand for? Pick up the gun, sailor. Muzzle first. Wrap a handkerchief around it. This isn't a wrapping handkerchief, Slate. This is a dropping handkerchief. So today you won't drop. Wrap it. What do you want Sir Papo's gun for? Ballistics will want to check it against the slugs in Paulo's body. I underrated you, Shannon. You'll hate yourself in the morning. I know. I'm not knocking you, Shannon. It's just that you figured a little ahead of me, that's all. Thrill me. Tell me how. Easy. Sir Papo never parts with the jewels and reports them stolen. Insurance money. Sure, sure. Tell me, Kirk, how do you figure Paulo figures? Also easy. Sir Papo kills the kid to make it look like the kid absconded. You mind if I take it from there? What else is there? Slate does this bit so well, Kirk. Let him do it. Yeah, thanks, sailor. Two of the jewels showed up, one to Paulo's mother, one to his girl. Sir Papo mailed him to throw off suspicion, to make it look like Paulo was spreading joy around. I never knew that Sir Papo had it any. Ah, but here's the twist. The gun Paula was holding in that barrio cellar had no fingerprints on it. No prints? <laughs> we were stupid, weren't we? You know, I clean forgot that dead men leave no prints. Which means Paula was dead before I met you at that moment. So Papa was downstairs making all that noise, and that gun's going to prove it. You'll probably hang, Kirk. Well, uh, you stink, Shannon. You stink, and you want... Sailor. Sailor, you hit a man over the head with a gun. I'm proud of you. What's that word I used on you, Slate? Use it on me. Magnifico, kid. You were sheer magnifico. Say it again. Yeah, well, don't let it go to your head. Come on, I'll take you home. Well, Slate, how did you like them? Well, you've improved, kid. Those are pretty fair tortillas. Did you follow the recipe in the book I bought you? Sure did. I mailed in the coupon in the back of it for free samples. 
If you want more tortillas, you're going to have to buy another book. Sailor, how can a girl your age be such a bad cook? Oh, sure, honey. I'm just talented. You can't cook, you can't thread a needle. Every time you press my pants, the creases are on the sides. What can you do, sailor? This. See? What else does a girl need to know? Slate, I'm talking to you. Slate. Can't cook, can't thread a needle, creases on the side. Ah, who needs it? Come here, sailor. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.